outline of this grant is that the most of spinal cord injuries are incomplete anatomically. It means that uh, there are um, lots of fibers remaining after the injury, the intact fibers. However, almost all injuries are complete functionally, meaning that below the level of injury, there is no sensation and motor function below this level of injury. In order to understand why these surviving fibers cannot mediate better recovery, we did electrophysiological experiments in which we evaluated physiological condition of these fibers. And we found that immediately after the injury, these surviving fibers can transmit to motor neurons. However, there is a pronounced reduction in transmission through the surviving fibers after a couple of days after the injury. And what is important that in initiation of this physiological and behavioral deficit coincided with the time when the elevation of scar-related molecules, which are chondroitin sulfate proteoglycans, so-called CSPGs, in tissue was maximum. CSPGs are an essential component of so-called perineuronal net, and they're always there. They are present in CNS. However, the level of these CSPGs are pretty low. Now, after the injury, when the glial scar is forming, there is a robust accumulation of CSPGs in the vicinity of the injury. So in our studies, we decided to examine if these CSPGs, which level is elevated after the injury, could block transmission to motor neurons. We recorded intracellularly from individual motor neuron in lumbar section of the cord. And responses in this motor neuron were evoked by electric stimulation of the descending fibers at the thoracic level. And normal non injured rate, we found that these responses are pretty large. However, after partial injury, conduction in the spared fibers contralateral to the lesion was impaired. And you can see that EPSP is now very small. So we used enzyme, so-called chondroitinase ABC, which is known to digest CSPGs, to see if digestion of CSPGs could recover transmission. And we found that transmission could be partially recovered. This means that CSPGs are really involved in the block of conduction after chronic partial spinal cord injury. Now the problem is the problem with treatment with enzyme is that it's not selected. It's pretty much dissects all these CSPGs. Our philosophy was that if CSPGs are coming to the injury, they might be useful to the injury. It means that not all CSPGs might be bad. Maybe some CSPGs could be useful. And that's why we examined how these individual CSPGs could affect conduction. And we found that one CSPG, which is NG2, induced block of these EPSPs. The other CSPGs that we examined did not. It means that NG2 is inducing conduction block after spinal cord injury. So using funds from DOD, we began collaboration with Dr. Joel Levine, and Dr. Joel Levine actually is an expert in NG2. He discovered this NG2 molecule. And moreover, he created antibody against this NG2. So we are using NG2 that was created in his laboratory, and we are investigating effect of NG2 antibody in our spinal cord injury model. We used model of hemisection spinal cord injury. When one side of the cord is completely lesioned, and other side remains intact. In non-injured rate, you can see that the signal is pretty big. After hemisection injury, the signal is decreased. However, in the rats that have been treated with NG2 neutralizing antibody, we have partial recovery of this signal. So this means that um, treatment with NG2 antibody improves not only transmission in damaged spinal cord, but it improves anatomical plasticity in damaged spinal cord. So our next step will be to combine 
this treatment that we found which is beneficial with other treatments which we, which we have discovered before to be beneficial. So we got some preliminary results and we hope that we'll get funding during the next period and we'll try to complete the next set of experiments.